Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about I feel out of control. So, in this video I'm going to help you understand relationships on a deeper level. I'm going to help you understand why people lose emotional self-control and get into arguments with their partners. So, I'm going to show you how to become more conscious and aware of what's going on internally and how to reassure your partner. This is a really, really good video. You're probably going to want to watch this one numerous times because it's really tough to get this concept internally and to get it on a deep level because here's a good analogy for you guys. Um, I want you to understand that learning about this takes time. And the way I look at it is like if you're walking down the street and there's a manhole. And I tell you, hey, look out, there's a manhole. Well, the first time, you're still going to fall in, right? Now, if I tell you again, the second time, you're going to say, oh, there's that manhole. And you're going to go to step around it, but you're still going to fall in it. You want to get to the place where you remember the manhole is there and you can go around it and not fall in it. And that is the difficulty because you're going to try and relearn something here that you've probably been doing for a very long time. But once you do, you're going to see great strides in your relationship. This is a really, really good video. It's really important for you guys. And I'll be honest with you, this one took me several hours to write to make sure that I had this down good for you. So, if you like what I share, by the end of the video, make sure you give it a like. A like because this one took quite a bit of time to plan out to really help you guys understand this concept. Um, I got an email from Kayla who has an anxious attachment style. So if you don't know what that is, that's okay. I'm going to give you a quick rundown about it. In the first two to three years of our life, we form an attachment style with our caregivers. Now, the more attentive that our parents are with us and giving us our needs, like feeding us when we're hungry, uh, giving us love or attention when we're crying, picking us up, changing us, interacting with us, the more they did that for us consistently, the more of a secure attachment uh, that we form with them. Okay? So, for example, if your parents met your needs 90% of the time consistently, you're going to have a good secure attachment style. Now, if your parents were not as attuned to your emotional needs, and we're not as consistent, you're going to form an anxious attachment style. There's also um, avoidant attachment style, but I'm not really going to get into that one in this video, okay? So I just want you to understand this real quick. Because what happens is the world does not feel safe if you are not, um, a, you know, having your needs met consistently by your caregivers in those first two years of your life, sometimes the first three, but it's really the first two. We become fearful that our parents will abandon us. And this is especially true if you had a dad and a mom that got a divorce, they got separated, they split up, and maybe you didn't see your dad very much after that. Because that happens a lot, unfortunately. So, for example, I'm going to share a little bit about me personally. My mom had a lot of anxiety. So, as an infant, as a baby, my mom's high anxiety level, I kind of absorbed that. That's what happens to you. If you're constantly in, around somebody that's anxious, as a child like that, it's all you know, and you become anxious too. Because it's almost like, why are they, you know, you're not thinking this, but it's like, why are they anxious? What's going on? If they're anxious, then maybe I should be anxious because there could be danger going on, right? 
And what happens is, because that's all you know, you don't even realize you're anxious. Other people will realize you're anxious, but you won't even realize it about yourself. And you might have an anxious attachment style and not even know it. So here are a few signs of anxiety that you may have had as a kid and maybe these things happen for you and now when you start to see these puzzle pieces formed you'll be like, whoa, I had anxiety as a kid. <clears throat> so, here are just a, a few of them that I wanted to point out for you guys. If you wet the bed as a kid, it's a sign of anxiety. You know, not just once in a while, but if you were consistently wetting the bed that is a very normal sign of anxiety. Frequent ear aches, stomach aches, picking your nose. <laughs> now you may be like, I don't pick my nose. Think back to your childhood. If, and, and watch kids. You see a lot of kids that are always picking their nose. That could be a sign of anxiety. Could be the sign of a big dry booger up there, but it could be a sign of anxiety. Um, difficulty focusing, frequent crying. So those are just some signs to think about for yourself. Maybe you had those and you had anxiety, you didn't even realize it. So, you're sitting here thinking, okay, why is attachment styles important? What does this have to do with dating, romance, relationships? Well, here's the uh, interesting part. The re relationship that you had with your parents, you're going to create with your romantic partners, okay? In your romantic relationships. So, the hurt and anxiety that you felt as a kid, you're going to have with your partner. And the more conscious and aware of it you are, the better you can work through it and have healthier, more secure relationships. So let me get into Kayla's email who talks about these kind of issues going on with her husband. Kayla says, Hi Craig, love your channel. I'm already seeing problems in my relationship with my husband and making changes thanks to your videos. Well that's great news. One of the things that me and my husband argue about is anytime he is out, okay, anytime he's out, it's leading to arguments, that tells me she's got separation anxiety. She says, if he goes out with his friends after work, I get very stressed and start obsessing about what he is doing. Even though he has never cheated, I worry that he's going to find Someone else better than me. Wow. That's powerful. I mean, I really commend her for not only figuring that out, but saying that out loud. I worry that he's going to find someone else that's better than me. So I wonder if her father found somebody better than her mother and that trauma is triggering separation anxiety in her. So, she says, I get really stressed and I don't know what comes over me. I just lose it. I start getting more and more angry and I can't calm down. Sound familiar, guys? You may have done this with your girlfriends or maybe they've done it with you in the past, maybe even somebody that you're currently with. So what's going on? She is having separation anxiety and she hasn't learned to soothe herself, right? In our early childhood, we learn to hear our parents' voice and soothe us and it actually calms down our nervous system and we forget that we do that over time, but that's actually how we start to learn to calm our anxiety is through our parents. So, if you don't know how to do that, one way you could do it is if you're watching my videos all the time, 
hear my voice and hear me calming you through the things that I'm teaching you and reminding you that everything's going to be okay. And you can always get in touch with me personally at AskCraig.net and I'll be happy to work with you because that will definitely help you a lot. Uh, to get that one-on-one. -on -one. So, let me continue with this email. Kayla says, This was our most recent argument. He went to meet up with a few friends after work, and he said he'd be home around 9. So she's already anxious that about what time he's going to be home. You could see it, you know, because she's already got it in the back of her mind. He came in around 10.15, I admit I had an angry tone of voice when he walked in the door. I said, what's wrong with you? Uh, why didn't you call me to tell me you were going to be late? So, you could see right off the bat all that anxiety, all that tension, all that worrying, all those fears that she had the longer he was out. The second he walked in the door, she just exploded on him. Well, it didn't really explode, but she got really upset and just, Psh, what's wrong with you? Right? So, he said, I told you I was going out with my friends. It's only an hour later. What's the big deal? She said, I grabbed my plate and threw it in the sink. I asked you to call if you're going to come home late. He yelled, why are you freaking out? You're out of control. Because I was waiting for you. I had a bad day and I wanted to talk with you. She probably didn't have a bad day until he was out later than she expected. Then that separation anxiety kicked in and then she started having a bad day. So, he says, I never go out with my friends and I was only out uh, an hour later than you expected. Why are you making a big deal out of nothing? Does this sound familiar to you guys? Because I'm sure it should. So she says, it's not nothing. You said 9 o'clock and you came home later. Who were you out with? Did you meet some girl at a bar? You don't even love me. Like always, you only think about yourself. You don't even care about me. If you've ever been in a relationship, you've been in a very similar argument. I can tell you that. I know I have. So, the anxiety is causing her to have an emotional meltdown. So, what does he say? Oh my God, you need to calm down. Then he slams the door and locks himself in the other room. And she says, now I feel even worse than when he was out. She says, Craig, I hate the way I feel. I feel like I'm losing control. I can't calm down. I know I'm making a big deal out of small things. And I don't know why. Well, it's because you're afraid of losing him. So what happens? In an effort to pull him close, you wind up pushing him away. The very thing that we're afraid of happening is often the very thing that we cause to happen. And I talk about this in the videos, The Real Reasons Relationship Fail. That's an excellent video, by the way, The Real Reason Relationships Fail and have discipline or fail. So go back and watch those videos again after you watch this one. So, ultimately what's going on is Kayla is afraid the relationship is not secure. That's why she's getting so anxious. She's feeling disconnected from her boyfriend. Then she starts to panic and she needs reassurance. That's really what she's looking for, guys. She's really looking for reassurance. She's scared as hell. He comes in the door, and she's really just wanting reassurance, but what does she do? She lashes out, and, and guys do this just as much. Kayla's just the one that's getting the poor brunt of it in this email. 
But um, the real difficult part is recognizing what's going on in the moment, like the manhole. You have to get to the point where you can step around the manhole, okay? That is the really tough challenge about this. So, to help you see what's going to go, or what goes on, I'm going to look at this again, at how they both could have handled the situation better, okay? It's not just one of those person's fault. I'm going to look at what both of those people could have done better in this situation. So, when the boyfriend, or the, I'm sorry, the boyfriend, the husband, first got home, Kayla was hurting and scared. So it caused her to be angry, which is all her boyfriend can see. And she says to him, why didn't you call when you knew you were going to be late? Our automatic response is to defend ourselves. When he perceived her behavior as a threat, he wants to defend himself and minimize what happened, right? He said, oh, I, I was just an hour late. What's the big deal? So he's minimizing his behavior and he's dismissing her hurt feelings. Okay? Now, if she was more aware of how she was feeling, she could have went over to him and said, I really missed you. I get scared that when you go out, you'll find somebody better than me and leave me. If you or your partner can become that conscious of your feelings, you can really learn to connect with your partner much easier. Now, if he was more conscious, he could have said, you know, when he walked in the door and she said, what's wrong with you? You didn't call me. You were going to be late. He could have said, you're right. I know you were worried and that you worry when I'm out. I apologize. I'm sorry. And then give her a big hug because that's what she's looking for is the reassurance. What he did, what he did was dismiss her feelings because he didn't make her feel understood. He was minimizing the behavior by saying, oh, he's just an hour late. So then what happens? She feels even more disconnected. She throws the plate, and then he says, oh, you're out of control. So, what she said is, I had a bad day, and I was waiting for you. If she was more conscious of how she was feeling, she could have said, I was scared you were never coming home. On some level, that is how she's feeling. In which case, you could have just reassured her. And he could have said, I'm sorry you had a bad day. It sounds like you really wanted to talk. I can understand, because if I had a really bad day, I would really want to, you know, share that with you and tell you about it too. Then he could put his arms around her, hold her close, make her feel safe, connect with her, and be present with her reassure her. What you have to understand is that one person feels scared, they feel disconnected, they lose emotional self-control, then they lash out when all they really want their partner to do is reassure them and hold them and say, I'm scared. I thought you were going to abandon me. Okay? Now, when the disconnected partner lashes out, the other person, in this situation, it's the guy who was inconsiderate and out late, gets anxiety over the woman's anger. So, her anxiety got worse when he was dismissive towards her initial response. You know, the, what's wrong with you? Then his anxiety level gets triggered by her anger. And then both partners start to worry that each other wants to leave. You see how that works? You have to understand that the real problem is anxiety and fear. Okay? Both people 
are constantly having to manage their fear that the other person is going to leave them. When you're able to identify what's really going inside you emotionally, you can start to avoid the manhole. Right? So, you're probably going to want to watch this video several times to really get it to sink in. I know it's a tough concept. It's the only way to avoid the manhole when you're about to step in it. That's the goal, is to identify it when it's happening in the present moment with your partners. It's easy to think about it and process it now, but as soon as you're in the situation, that's the tough part because you could see that these things escalate really quickly. So, if you liked what I had to share in this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I post new videos Monday through Friday. And if you want to get my help personally, go to my website, askcraig.net, sign, sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I'm Craig Kenneth, and I will talk with you soon.